In this lesson, we're looking at another application of stoichiometry. This time, we'll apply our calculations to solutions. But first, we should review stoichiometry calculations. Though we've solved many different types of stoichiometry problems, the common theme is to convert from one chemical, our known, to another, the unknown. This is done using the coefficients in a balanced equation as a mole ratio. We've also learned about a variety of different units that can be converted into moles. We can go from grams of a substance to moles. If a gas is at STP, we can go from liters to moles using the conversion one mole equals 22.4 liters. In fact, even if the gas is not at STP, its volume can be calculated by using the ideal gas law. PV equals nRT. We can also convert from particles like atoms, molecules, and formula units into moles. Then at the other end, we can perform the same conversions to grams, liters of gas at STP, and particles. This is what stoichiometry has allowed us to do up to this point. But now we'll add a new option in stoichiometry calculations one that allows us to use liters of a solution in stoichiometry. And all we need for this is a liter to mole conversion or a mole to liter conversion. And as we've already learned, this conversion has a name. It's called molarity. Remember the units for molarity are moles per liter, making it a conversion factor. For example, if you knew a solution has a concentration of 2 m, or 2 molar, this means there are 2 moles of solute for every 1 liter of solution. Or we might say for every 1 liter of solution there are 2 moles of solute. So we have a conversion factor that lets us go from liters to moles. Many times we won't measure solutions in liters, but a smaller, more convenient volume called a milliliter. We have a conversion factor to go from milliliters to liters as well. So if we're given the milliliters of a known solution and asked to calculate the grams of an unknown substance in a chemical reaction, we will convert from milliliters to liters and then from liters to moles using the mole per liter or molarity. Then we go from moles of known to moles of unknown and finally to grams. Let's try a couple of these examples. How many grams of silver chloride are formed when a 35.5 milliliter sample of 0.12 molar silver nitrate is reacted with excess sodium chloride solution? When solving a stoichiometry problem, we like to begin with a balanced equation, which we don't have, so we need to write one. This problem mentions three different chemicals. Let's figure out which are reactants and which is a product. The wording of the problem gives us a clue. AgNO3 is reacted with NaCl. These are the two reactants. The wording also tells us that AgCl is formed, so it's a product, which we'll put on the right side. Notice we haven't accounted for the sodium or the nitrate yet. Those make up the second product, which we'll write here, NaNO3. Now we'll balance the equation, which is an easy task. All of the coefficients are ones. I'll write all the important information near my equation. There are 35.5 milliliters of AgNO3, and its concentration is 0.12 molar. I'm going to break this unit into its parts, though. Another reading of the problem reveals our unknown, grams of AgCl. Now, for the calculation, we're looking for grams AgCl. So what about the given? There are two. The stoichiometry strategy shows we should start with the milliliters of known and through a series of steps eventually convert this to grams of unknown. So let's give this a try. 
our given is 35.5 milliliters. Now, let me show you a great shortcut. If I can convert milliliters to liters in my head, I can save a step. Remember, a liter is equivalent to 1,000 milliliters. And when you divide 35.5 by 1,000, you move the decimal three places to the left, giving 0 0.0355 liters. So rather than writing 35.5 milliliters, I just slide the decimal over three places and write 0 0.0355 liters as my given. Next, we convert liters to moles. A common mistake made at this point is to use the 22.4 liters equals one mole conversion. This conversion applies to the volume of a gas at STP. Is that what we're working with? No way. We have a solution, so we can't use this as our conversion. So how do we convert liters to moles? This is where we put in the molarity as our conversion factor. This solution is 0.12 mole for every one liter. Next, we put in the mole to mole ratio, which is one to one. And lastly, since we're looking for grams of AGCL, we'll convert the moles AGCL to grams. We do this using silver chloride's molar mass. To calculate the answer, we'll multiply each of the numerators. 0 0.0355 times 0 0.12 times 143.32, which gives us 0 0.6105432. Now, we'll round this to two significant digits and write 0 0.61 grams AGCL. In the second example, we read how many milliliters of 0.25 molar HCl is required to react with 4 grams of NaOH. The first step to solving this is to write a balanced equation. HCl and NaOH are both reactants, but what is formed? Well, this is a double replacement reaction where the H and the Na switch places. This means we'll form NaCl and HOH. Usually when we write the formula for water, it's just H2O. Like the last equation, this one's pretty easy to balance because all the coefficients are ones. Let's write down what we know from this problem. The concentration of HCl is 0.25 moles per liter. We also know the mass of NaOH is four grams. At first glance, this looks like a limiting reactant problem. But look at this question carefully. We're looking for milliliters of HCl. So the unknown in this problem is the volume of HCl in milliliters. Let's write those units over here. Since the unknown in this problem is HCl, this means the known substance is NaOH. And I'll start with four grams of NaOH. We should do a quick review of our stoichiometry strategy for this. In this calculation, we're starting with grams of known, and we're looking for milliliters. So we'll go from grams of known to moles of known, then use the mole ratio to get to moles of unknown, next the molarity to convert to liters of solution, and finally convert to milliliters. Here we go. We'll figure out the gram to mole ratio for NaOH using a periodic table. This number, called the molar mass, is 40.0 for NaOH. So the grams of NaOH will cancel. Next, the moles of NaOH to moles of HCl, or unknown. This ratio is 1 to 1. Now remember, we're trying to get to milliliters of HCl. So let's turn our moles into liters. This liter to mole ratio is called molarity.
and it lets me convert from moles to liters for a solution. Make sure you put the 0.25 in the right spot. It's 0.25 moles for every one liter. We're almost done. The last step will turn liters into milliliters, and it's one liter for every 1,000 milliliters. Before I calculate, I might simplify, dividing 4 into 4 one time and 4 into 10 10 times. Then I would divide 10 into 1,000, which gives 100. Finally, I would consider 0.25 as 1 fourth. And I would divide this into 100. Remember, dividing a fraction is like multiplying by the inverse. So dividing 100 by 1 fourth is like multiplying 100 by 4, which is 400. If you don't trust yourself to make these simplifications, just punch all the numbers in on the calculator and make sure you get the same answer. So once again, we're using stoichiometry to calculate mass and volumes of materials that are involved in a chemical reaction. You can use your new conversion factor, molarity, to solve a variety of new problems. Good luck!